again, everybody. Welcome back to Desert Sky Adventures. Today is Thursday, August 24th, 2023. And today I'm out here with my good friend, Todd, from the OK Corral. And we are about an hour north, an hour or so north of Tombstone in the historic town of Wilcox, Arizona. What year did they say this place was incorporated? 19... Uh, it was re 1889. Look at that old theater. So Todd, people who are familiar with the movie Tombstone might be under the impression that there were only three Earp brothers. But how many Earp brothers were there actually in Tombstone at one time? Five. There were five Earp brothers. And why is Wilcox kind of a historical significance to the Earp brothers? This is where El uh, Warren came to and where he died. Warren Earp. Well, that's not Warren Earp. No, that's Rex Allen. That's Rex Allen. I don't know a whole lot about Rex Allen. He was one of the singing cowboys, wasn't he? Kind of, yeah. One of September 31st, 1920, Doris and Faye Allen and Wilcox, Rex L.V. Allen was cross-eyed at birth as a young boy Rex sang in the barber shop on this very busy street. He and his dad played for dances and rodeos in the 30s. He excelled in glee clubs and church choirs. Rex left home determined to find his place and the career he loved in music. In 1945 at WLS Radio in Chicago, he gained nationwide popularity on the National Barn Dance. In 1946, he married Bonnie Linder, the mother of his children, Rex Allen Jr., Curtis, Mark, and Benita Allen. Through the golden age of radio, Rex Allen starred with the greats Red Foley, Lulu Bell, and Scotty and George Goebel. Huh. There he is right there. But anyway, back to Warren Earp. So, based on what I read, he was kind of a cocky guy and uh, kind of a bully. It sounds like he kind of uh, relied on the reputation of his brothers which he wasn't really quite uh, quite as uh, big and bad as they were. But unfortunately for Warren Earp, he met his demise. And it was right over here on the corner, wasn't it? Yep. And this bar right over here, let's go over there and check it out. Or it used to be a bar. I think today it's a wine tasting place. But back in the day, it was called the Headquarters Saloon. And Warren Earp got into a little alter altercation what was the guy's name he got into a fight with? It might say on that plaque. All right, let's go check that out. The saloon wasn't real big. You can obviously tell. Yeah, this is an original building, right? Uh-huh. Yeah, this is an old, old building. And we are just stopping in, so I'm not sure if they'll let us take a look around inside, but I know open. we can at least take a look at the plaque. Yeah, they might not be open yet. Yeah, their open sign's not lit up, so... Oh, they open at noon. Oh, well, that's okay. Is at this location, the historic headquarters saloon stood from 1890 until it burned in 1940. Warren Earp was shot and killed in the saloon on July 6th, 1900. So then this isn't the original building. No, it's the same location. It's killed on July 6, 1900. By 1900, Wyatt was already up in Alaska. Sounds about right. Around the side of the building, there's this side door. And what's the story with this door, Todd? Supposedly, from what I've read, what I've been told, is you had this doorway and the one on the front. Mm -hmm. Prior to Warren being shot, he would have come out this door whether to get a gun, whatever. He went back through that door and he was killed right inside. 
this room there. Let's see, right inside this doorway. So I was doing a little research on this the other day, and apparently what happened in here was on July 6, 1900, Warren Earp got into an altercation with a man named John Boyette. And we don't really know what started it. There are a lot of different theories. Some are more interesting than others. But apparently, according to bystanders, both men were in this bar. They were both extremely intoxicated. They started uh, hurling insults at each other, and uh, it was apparently quite brutal. And uh, at some point, apparently Warren told this guy, John, that he had a gun. He's like, why don't you go get yours and we'll handle this. And so apparently he did. He went and got a gun. He came back a short time later. So based on what I read, it sounds like the altercation started in here. And once it got heated, I believe Warren ran outside. I read that he was out here in the street somewhere. And John Boyette fired at him four times and missed all four times. And I'm not really clear on the details. I guess Warren must have ran back through this door to try and seek shelter or something like that. And it was the fifth shot that hit Warren in the chest, killed him instantly. Basically and shot him right directly through the heart. And yeah. He was dead before he hit the floor. And so when they, uh, when they came to check out the body, they found that he had his hand on a knife and the blade was open. But as we all know, it's not a good idea to bring a knife to a gunfight. To a gunfight. <laughs> Who knows? This could have been where that saying came from. <laughs> yeah, this may not be the original or exact door because if the building did burn down, but through um, like a layout of what the actual saloon was, there yeah. was a side door. So it was in this general vicinity. General area here, yeah. Very interesting. about where that wall is opened up. Yeah. Is around the vicinity, like in the middle is around the vicinity where he was shot. Crazy. Well, we can't go in, but we can see in. Right back there is where that incident occurred. Hundred and twenty three years ago. And then they rebuilt like a lot of the buildings in Tombstone. Yeah. You know, they burned whatever's wood burned, obviously. So you could have had a shell. Yeah. Right here on this corner, this is where Warren Earp, perhaps have his own doing. I don't know why you would challenge a guy to a gunfight when you didn't have a gun on you. It doesn't seem like a very smart idea, but either way, this is where it went down and this is where Warren Earp met his demise. In fact, his grave is not too far from here. We might go out and see if we can find it. So Wilcox apparently gained notoriety for being a whistle stop. Not so much a mining town like a lot of the other towns around here, but this mural hook here gives you a little bit of a timeline. Running feud. I have another historic building here, the Wilcox Bank and Trust, 1917. Which looks like that. We're standing now in front of what is the Rex Allen Museum, Wilcox Cowboy Hall of Fame. They are not quite open yet. We might come back in a little bit once they are, but another marker here. This used to be the Schley Saloon, 1897 to 1919. So this building actually was constructed. You see there, 1890. Still here today. I'm really glad we came out here today. Wilcox is a place I've been wanting to see for a while, but hadn't made it out to yet. 
But man, what a jewel out here. You got all these old school buildings and lots of stuff to look at. Some of them are abandoned, some of them are still open. It's a really interesting place to come check out. Right next to the railroad tracks here, and this is obviously the old railroad depot. In fact, this is probably the one they built the town around, right? I'm pretty sure. If not for the train coming through here, there would have been no town. It looks like they have another marker on the building here. City Hall. Okay. Southern Pacific Railroad Depot, 1880. This is the only remaining original redwood frame Southern Pacific Railroad Station in Arizona. It's also the only known original on-site passenger depot still existent on the Southern Transcontinental Railroad route between Los Angeles and Chicago, registered in the National Register of Historic Places. Looks like today, this is Wilcox City Hall. This building still has these old school sliding doors on it, like uh, the barn doors. That's pretty cool. I can only imagine when this was the main way in and out of town, this place was probably a real beehive of activity, as Adam the Woo would say. <laughs> but today it's pretty quiet. We have here a undoubtedly very old abandoned home, but pretty reminiscent of most of the houses you would have found in this area back in the day. Doesn't look too bad. Maybe someone will buy it and fix it up. Nothing a coat of paint couldn't fix. Man, look at that old rail car. Looks like the wheels are missing. It's up on blocks, but maybe we can take a look through the window. Back to the future floor, <laughs> This thing has undoubtedly seen many miles. I can't really see in there right now, but you guys can. Says here the Mascot and Western Railroad built in 1915 to carry passengers and supplies to 16 miles of the Mascot Mine. The train car is the original half passenger, half freight used, half freight car used on the line. So, yeah, this thing's been around the block more than a few times in over a hundred years. All right, so Todd and I have been walking around taking a look at the downtown area. And uh, what do you say we head over to the graveyard, see if we can find the grave of Mr. Warren Earp? Works for me. Let's do it. All right, guys, so we came down this dirt road, which is on the edge of town. A little bumpy ride in the vet, but not too bad. But that brings us over here to the historic Wilcox Cemetery. Where, as we understand it, Warren Earp's grave is here somewhere. And this looks like another extensive cemetery, but I do know, I've seen the pictures. It shouldn't be too hard to find. I just don't really know how big this cemetery is. But we'll take a look around, see if we can find it. I would have to think that we see a few graves that have fences around them. I don't remember seeing that in the picture, but usually if they're prominent graves, like this one has a newer fence around it. What is this? 
Oh, this headstone's been broken. Died 1897, October 26. Exact day, 16 years after the gunfight. Yeah, October 26. Crazy. Undoubtedly very old. At least we got a nice breeze going. Hopefully that'll keep the camera from overheating. This is not Warren's grave. Let's keep looking. There's a few more headstones over there, but I think there. I think that's, that's it right over there. there. I can see the big pad underneath it. Yeah. Hall, 18 years old. Must have been his son. I can't make out what that says. Not lost. Not lost, but huh. There's obviously one here, but it's gone from gun and gone. Something about these old historic cemeteries. I just love walking through them. I wish I could meet some of these people and pick their brain a little bit. Well, it just tells you how difficult life was back in the day, too, because you look at a lot of these headstones. They were young. You're finding, you know, yeah. Of course, back then, if you lived to 50, that was considered pretty good, right? If you made it to 40, that was pretty good. Here's a headstone here that's totally different. Oh, yeah, look at that. Somebody named Peter. There's no dates. Been lost with time. And the lamb of his love is thy guide through the gloom. Three years. Here's a baby. Three years, four months. A lonely house and sad hour since our dear one has gone, but a brighter home than ours in heaven. I can't really make out the rest. But there's the back fence for the cemetery there, so looking forward, you can see the archway we entered way back there, so this is another really good sized cemetery another one I had not seen before looks like we found it there he is And you were saying something about a rumor that this might not actually be where he's buried? 
I had heard it is where he's buried. I've heard it's he is buried somewhere within the fences of the cemetery at some point. It's crazy. A clerical error a hundred years ago and somebody's grave might have gotten swapped or there might not be any way to know for sure, but based on available resources, this is probably Warren Herb's grave. You see there, 1855 to 1900. The way it was. Well, poor Warren Herb. A little too cocky. A little too hot-headed. At the end of the day, as we all know, not smart to bring a knife to a gunfight, right? That's what happens. My beloved sister. We've been going. These are, this is old. Looks like early 1900s. For sure. Can't make out any dates on that one, can you? There's a date on up on the top. I see a nine. That's the only thing I see. Yeah, I can't tell. It's broke. It's kind of sad. I mean, I know with a lot of these old cemeteries, mm -hmm. like with the way it was in Tombstone, as long as your family was around to take care of the grave, that's all you needed. But you can see a lot of these graves, have, or the stones rather, have just fallen over. Well, that's like the our current cemetery. A lot of the older ones is looks like this. It's yeah. Like field, but you can still see the humps where the the grave is. Yeah, a lot of broken headstones, stones that have just fallen over and just been left there for hundred years. So, I mean, maybe the families of these people have, have died out as well. It's been a long time. Maybe they moved away. Well, we came out here to Wilcox and found the grave of yet another historic figure. Maybe not as popular as Johnny Ringo or Wyatt Earp, but they were all of the uh, same family, the, the Earp brothers. And uh, poor uh, Warren over here kind of went the same way as Morgan. Shot, died, and that was that. But we came out to Wilcox, we saw a little of the town checked out the historic cemetery you guys know i love doing that kind of stuff and uh i think we're good to call it a day what do you think todd works for me all right well i hope you guys enjoyed coming out here to wilcox with us and learning a little more about the lesser known Ert brother warren his story and his final resting place but we do hope you enjoyed the video and uh i think that'll about do it so until next time until the next video see you down the road